This episode is proudly supported by Pepe Sayer Australian Cultured Butter. At Pepe Sayer, we focus on quality. So if someone comes into your restaurant and they see you're using Pepe Sayer, they know immediately that that is a quality product you've got in front of you on the table. And that comes from a decade of just doing quality butter day after day. For more information, go to pepisayer.com.au. I think really we want to keep highlighting wasabi as being something more than what you'll find, you know, beside your sashimi or your sushi. You know, wasabi is such a versatile product. This is The Producers. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Shima wasabi is in northern Tasmania and shares its latitude with southern Japan. Tasmania's cool climate is the ideal year-round environment in which to grow this rare plant to create genuine wasabi products. And for Esme Atkinson, working with this amazing plant has changed her life. So Shima Wasabi is located in northern Tasmania, sort of just outside of Devonport. And yeah, we're the largest, well, we're the only commercial uh, wasabi producer in the, in the country. Tasmania's got the perfect cool climate, clean air. We've got plentiful rainfall, uh, so it creates just the ideal all year round uh, environment in which to grow wasabi and we're also uh, so our location mirrors the latitude of southern japan so we're just perfect but on the opposite side <laughs> most wasabi sold around the world is typically made from horseradish but there is nothing quite like the real thing. Yeah, so obviously the wasabi stem is what most people refer to as, as the root. It's actually a modified rhizome, so which is a stem. Um, so obviously that's what's used to make the paste that people you know, associate with wasabi. Um, all the leaves, is, they grow beautiful sort of heart-shaped leaves that range in you know, quite small sizes from, you know, 30 uh, millimetres right up to 150 millimetres. Um, so all those sorts of leaves can be used in things like garnishes or um, for canapes or even as like a wrap. Uh, and then the stalks, they are fantastic. They're like a, I guess, like a celery or um, spring onion substitute. So you can put them in different salads. And they're also traditionally um, used for pickling. Uh, you can also, the flowers, they're stunning. They're uh, just quite a delicate, beautiful little white flower. And you know, they're quite popular with some of the, the high-end chefs. So every component can be used. And then even the, the offcuts, we then use that as well to produce our wasabi powder, um, which then can be reconstituted into a paste. So there's no wastage on the farm, very, very little wastage, which is wonderful. It's almost a combination of like, I don't know, like a, a, a leafy water lily in a way, like it, cause it's a, such a, it's a semi-aquatic plant uh, and it's quite bushy and has got really quite large leaves that you would kind of think of like water lily but it's it, it's really unique it's hard to describe and I find when visitors come to the farm they're always very surprised because they just don't really know what to expect from a, a wasabi plant and uh, you know Everyone sort of doesn't think much about wasabi other than the, the green stuff in a tube, which is typically horseradish anyway. So it's, yeah, it grows probably up to 60 centimetres high, 60 centimetres wide, um, sort of long stalks and large leaves and, you know, multiple wasabi stems growing. Yeah, and it sort of changes throughout the year. So so during winter, it's when it's flowering and it produces these long tendrils that grow up quite tall and end in these lovely white flowers. So it's quite, quite pretty and delicate looking over the, over the winter period. Wasabi growing started in Tasmania as a Tasmanian government initiative. Wasabi is a really uh, challenging plant to grow. It takes... Uh, anywhere from 18 months to two years before you'll actually be able to harvest a wasabi stem. 
um, and leaves and stalks. We can harvest them all year round, but to actually produce and harvest the stems, um, it's a long, long waiting process. In Tasmania, wasabi um, caught the eye of the Tasmanian government back in the uh, mid-1990s actually and was encouraging people to sort of experiment with the crop. We could see that it would be you know, a high value uh, plant to add to the Tasmanian industry and yeah, quite a few people set up small wasabi farms, some more successful than others. Um, there was a farm in Mole Creek which ended up having to um, fold because the platypus kept disrupting the plants. <laughs> so it's taken you know, a couple of decades to really um, come to what it is now and you know, Taz Foods was fortunate enough to um, take over ownership of Shima Wasabi in 2016 and sort of elevate it from there. Notoriously difficult to plant, grow and harvest. Wasabi grown in Tasmania is done so a little differently than in Japan. We grow our wasabi quite differently to what they do in Japan. So our setup's a hydroponic setup, whereas in Japan it's grown within the waterways um, in a much more traditional farming practice. So we're actually able to grow our wasabi at a faster rate than what they do traditionally. And it allows us to grow larger stems. And we've had Japanese chefs come and visit and talk about the comparison between the Japanese wasabi and our wasabi. And they say that, you know, it compares in terms of, you know, in the flavour profile, um, but they're always very impressed at how how large we manage to grow our wasabi and how quickly. And we're quite fortunate that we also, our wasabi is free of quite a few of the the diseases that exist in the wasabi crops in Japan. So, um, you know, we're definitely up there in producing a really renowned quality of crop. Esme remembers the underwhelming experience she first had with wasabi, but after working with it and understanding its complexities, it's opened up a new world of experiences. Oh, I was pretty curious child when it come to to food like I was always under my mum's feet in the kitchen um wanting to taste everything and you know I remember hassling her for chili powder one day she was had chili powder and I was just, I was just going you're not going to like that you're not going to like that and it's like no no let me taste it and you know I kind of regretted her letting me try that <laughs> but yeah I was always interested in different things and I remember like the first time I'd had wasabi and it was just the, the green stuff with some sushi and wasn't very impressed and then after now you know sort of having access to real wasabi it's a it's a really different experience um yeah so i'm glad that i i didn't give up on it <laughs> farming wasabi was an unexpected opportunity for esme that has been equally difficult and exhilarating oh uh, it was actually by chance that i ended up working in this industry. Um, prior to that, my background was in uh, nature conservation. I used to work for the government, uh, you know, working with threatened species and, you know, looking after threatened plant communities on different farms and stuff throughout Tasmania. So I sort of shifted and then I had an opportunity uh, to come and work on the wasabi farm and I just thought what a fascinating plant so it was a plant that attracted me more so than the actual food component uh, but now yeah I just I love it it's such a, a unique and amazing uh, type of plant to be working with. I guess for me it was just such a, a steep learning curve in dealing with a crop that very few people had any knowledge of and sort of it was sink or swim so as i mentioned it, it's a very um, challenging plant to maintain and keep healthy so it's just constantly experimenting with different ways of growing the plant keeping it healthy 
and how, how to manage it and it will forever changing and just adapting with it and just sort of learning you know during summer wasabi is a very up upset it doesn't like the heat and how to kind of alleviate those pressures on the crops so yeah it's just been a, a real um yeah real challenge and then along the way we've made some amazing um changes to you know the way we we harvest the product and some of the the products that we're producing like we've got a, a real authentic wasabi paste now which previously wasn't available on the market so yeah it's been great to sort of go forward in in many areas and you know showcase what an amazing product it is as esme explains the flavor of real wasabi is something most people don't get a chance to experience yes yeah, so uh, obviously most people think of when they're having wasabi they think of that that sort of great big hit of heat that kind of you know takes your breath away and yeah that's typically the horseradish when you have wasabi it has that kick of the heat but it's also very sweet and it's cleansing of your palate so you have a little bit and then it dissipates and you and you want a bit more and it almost becomes quite a, addictive so it's it's quite a it's it's a really enjoyable flavor um compared to you know something like like horseradish and it's very different from chili so chili is an oil based uh heat and so it sort of will coat your mouth and you takes a long time to disappear whereas wasabi real wasabi has a it's water based so it will dissipate quite quickly and um leave you sort of wanting more so yeah it's it's a it's a totally different flavour profile to, to horseradish. The key to the success of Shima wasabi lies in the connections with some of Australia's very best chefs. Yeah, chefs are definitely important. Um, we, we sell our fresh produce primarily to chefs in restaurants throughout, throughout Australia and you know we've been really fortunate enough to have so many wonderful chefs you know, showcase our products like people like um, Tetsuya, Peter Gilmore, uh, Adam Liao, Masaki. That, you know, there's a there's a long list that sort of continues to grow. And you know, we've even been fortunate enough to host uh, the chef to the Emperor of Japan. Um, so we have lots of um, amazing people that love our product. And yeah, it's wonderful when we have the opportunity to, to host chefs on the farm and, and show them through and like let them experience what a wasabi plant looks like and then you know get some thinking about all the different ways that they can utilise a product and then they'll, you know, go away and talk about it and then come back and we'll start ordering, you know, all these um, wonderful products to put on their menus. Although wasabi farming is a thrilling challenge, it's the connections with chefs that give the role a sense of adventure. Oh, there's been so many um, great experiences I've had since working here. Um, and they all, yeah, they all revolve around sort of the people that, you know, we've met and been able to host on the farm. Um, we recently had uh, the Australian uh, ambassador of Japan and his delegation um, visit and that was fantastic so now we're you know, regularly supplying wasabi to the Australian Embassy of Japan which is great uh, our products are being featured on MasterChef and you know utilized beautifully by the contestants to create you know the winning dishes of the day and stuff like that so that's always been you know Brilliant. And then, you know, we've had film producers come on site, you know, like Japanese based um, game shows that come on and do segments with us to sort of showcase what we're, we're doing back home in Japan. And they got quite fascinated by the fact that, you know, we're growing wasabi in Tasmania. Um, so, yeah, all the amazing people that come come to visit really make make a difference to getting exposure of our products and what we do out there i think it's 
given me a much greater appreciation for primary producers basically you know farmers really put their heart and soul into everything they do and I think sometimes we kind of forget that when you're at the local supermarket just grabbing stuff off the shelf you know there's a lot of a lot of time and love and energy gone into sort of getting that that produce there and I think I've definitely got far greater appreciation for people who work on the land that's for sure. It's a continual education with wasabi, but it's far more versatile than most of us realise. I think really we want to keep highlighting wasabi as being something more than what you'll find, you know, beside your sashimi or your sushi. You know, wasabi is such a versatile product and we're working with several chefs this year to kind and of, kind of showcase a multitude of ways it can be used. Uh, ideally would love to see you know our Tasmanian grown real wasabi um, become a household condiment like that everyday Australian chefs are using and it's not just about the fresh produce as well you know, we've got you know, wasabi powder which you can easily store away in the pantry and you know it lasts for several years and you can take a bit of powder out, add some water and then you've, you know, you're making a paste or you know, we've recently launched a, a ready-made paste which can sit in the refrigerator and you can pull that out and you know, use that instead of mustard with your steak or you know, it's, there's so many different ways to use a product. So it's about educating people about wasabi, how to use it and you know, we just hope that we can continue those sorts of connections and build our profile and, you know, hopefully one day everybody's heard of us and using our wasabi. When it boils down to it, it's the connection with nature that drives Esme every day. I love working with plants. <laughs> um, you know, they they don't talk back, they stay in one place and they're generally pretty easy to please. So just, just tending to plants is lovely. And I also have the most amazing team of harvesters. You know, we're a small team. There's only six or seven of us any sort of given time. And we all work really hard and we're all so passionate about what we do. We just think we've got, we're so, so lucky to work with such a unique plant unique crop and you know we love it and it's just we have a lot of fun along the way it's great esme and her team at shima wasabi devote themselves to the cultivation of genuine wasabi products by harvesting the pristine environment in which it is grown and that's why it's now regarded as one of the world's best here in tasmania This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of producers, farmers, makers and growers, the true lifeblood of the food industry. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or email us at producerspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au.